What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS5 jailbreak news update. So we've finally got some new developments for the current exploits that we've had for the PS5 for some time. Firstly, we have a new implementation of an exploit from Slayer's Gorvi. Uh, so currently I believe it uses the same exploit that everyone else has been using, you know, Spectre's implementation with the webkit. And we have John Tornblum's with the Blu-ray drive. They all use the same kernel exploit. By the looks of things, this also uses the same kernel exploit because he does also credit the flow for the vulnerability disclosure as well as Spectre Dev, Chendo Chap as well. And it can also load the same payloads and it works through the webkit just like Spectre's version. However, right now it doesn't automatically load the debug settings like Spectre's version does. So you'll need a separate debug settings payload if you were using um, Slayer's Gorvi's exploit to enable the debug settings. But generally, one of the things that has been added here is support for .bin payloads in PLD format. Included in that is a new decryption payload that allows you to successfully decrypt your PS5 games, which is a pretty big deal. You can finally decrypt PS5 executables. Now, apparently this has been around for a while, maybe in private, but we can finally do it publicly now. Actually decrypt our things like our eboot.bin our main game executable, as well as the modules like SCE modules, SCE system, the write.prx file. We can finally decrypt those. Up till now, we've only been able to dump the game files, which for the executables was the encrypted versions of the executables, which you can't really do anything with. You can't really like, you know, look at it or reverse engineer it or any of that kind of stuff. But with a payload that now allows you to decrypt and dump those executables, with the decrypted version, you could reverse engineer it, find some interesting stuff. And, you know, it's also good for creating like fake packages for PS5s, but obviously we don't have the ability to run any kind of PS5 homebrew or fake packages yet. But again, this is a good step towards that. But for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to actually get his exploit set up, Slayer's Gorvi's version, as well as show you how to use this decrypt payload that will allow you to decrypt your game files so that you can basically create decrypted dumps of your PS5 games. So if we switch over to our PS5, the first thing we're going to do here is run a game. So I'm going to run Astro's Playroom just as an example. We're going to go ahead and try and dump and decrypt the executable files for this game. So we're going to go ahead and run it here. Then we're going to press the PS button to exit. Just like you would do if you were dumping a game on the PS4. You run the game first and then you run the dumper payload. So essentially we're then going to head over to our settings. Now, if you're doing this from scratch, obviously you need to be on firmware 4.03 for this particular exploit. It may come out for higher firmwares like 4.50, 4.51 and some lower firmwares as well. Probably the same firmwares that are supported by Spectre's exploit right now and John Tornblum's. But as this exploit only came out yesterday, it currently only supports firmware 4.03 as of right now. So if you're on 4.03 firmware, then you should be good to go. So. If we're doing this from scratch, you need to be able to access the web page. So I do have videos showing you how to set up things like, you know, website links in notifications so you can easily access the browser or you can actually add the web browser as a proper app in your home menu that you can select to just quickly open the browser. So you can check out my tutorials showing you guys how to do that. I'll leave them in the cards and down in the description. But the easy way to do it real quick is to just go into the network settings, go down to settings, Go to set up internet connection, select your network, either wired or Wi-Fi that you're currently using, press the options button and go to advanced settings. And then from here, we're going to go down to DNS settings, change it from automatic to manual, and then set the primary DNS as 192.241.221.79 and click done. There's another IP address you can also use that I'll put up on screen if that one doesn't work, then click OK and then let it connect up to your network. And there we go, once that's done, you then want to sign out and log back into your profile on your PS5. Once you've done that, if you come back into the settings and load the user guide, it should redirect you to Al Azov's exploit page for the PS4, uh, which also has a URL redirector you can use to access the web page. So we can press uh, left trigger twice and that will bring up the URL redirector. And this will allow you to go to any website you want on your PS5. So in this case, we could go to the full link, which I'll leave at the bottom of the screen here. Now, I've also just created a basic tiny URL version of it so we can access it quicker without having to type in that full path. So you can also go there as well or create your own bit.ly link or tiny URL link to get there. And we're going to go ahead and submit and that will take us over to Slayer's Garvey's exploit page.
And as you can see here, we've got PS5 firmware 4.03. So in order to do this, we're going to need either Netcat or SoCat to dump our files because it doesn't dump directly to a USB drive, unfortunately. It has to dump it over sockets, uh, over the network, which is not the best solution, not the most convenient solution. But, I mean, it is early days. So all we're going to do here is go ahead and download this version of SoCat for Windows from the GitHub from Tech128. I'll leave it down in the video description. It has everything you need. You just go to the code, download it as a zip file and then extract that zip file over to your computer, as you can see right here. So from here, we're just going to go up here into the URL bar of our socat.exe, and we're going to go and type in cmd space and then enter, and that will open up a command prompt in this directory. So the command we're looking for, as provided by Zeko on Twitter, is this command right here, socat-u-d-d-d tcp colon ps5 ip which of course is going to be your ps5's ip address which when we were in our settings we saw that it was 192.168.137.31 in my case port number is 9023 reuse address open colon ra.tar that's the tar file that will be created where your decrypted executable files will be stored and then the create command right there so that's the command that you want I'll leave it in the video description. So all we're going to do here is then inject the payload first of all. Now I'm going to use Netcat GUI to do this. So we're going to open up Netcat GUI. We're going to take the game decryption payload, which will also be linked in the video description. And we're going to copy that into Netcat GUI. Again, we're also going to put in our PS5's IP. But the port number for injecting the payload is 9019. And we receive the data on port 9023. So with that, we can head back on to our PS5. And on the PS5, we're going to hit the button for Jailbreak plus Netcat. Okay, there we go. Waiting for payloads. So when it says waiting for payloads, we're going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to run this command for listening. So we're going to listen first. And then as soon as I hit enter on SoCat, we're then going to inject the payload with Netcat. So we're going to press enter here and we're going to click inject payload and boom, there we go. You can see we got a successfully connected from local address. Okay, there we go. So it is, I guess, done. I don't know if it may have failed there. It does say shut down five colon two uh, exiting with status zero. So I don't know if that's normal or not. I don't know how big the files are for Astro's Playroom, but we will take a look to see if it looks like it decrypted that properly. So if we go into the SoCat for Windows folder, we should have this tar file in here and it does have data inside. So it did successfully transfer some data at least. So we're going to go ahead and right click and open this up in 7-zip. And with 7-zip, we've got our mount folder. We'll just copy that out to our computer. Okay, so if we go into the MNT folder, we've got Sandbox, PFS, MNT. We've got PPSA 01325, which is Astro's Playroom. We also have the patch union because I think I have an update installed as well. So it's also got the patch decrypted as well. We've got our eboot.bin, our main game executable, which looks like that may have been decrypted. And we also have our write.sprx file, which has also looks like it's been decrypted. Now we can check by using the uh, FTP payload, which I have right here. And if you were trying to dump your game to actually get the full game decrypted, then you are going to need to also dump the game files through something like FTP. There is also a dumper payload, which I showed in a previous video that I'll leave linked in the cards and down in the video description that also dumps your game files to a USB drive. So you could use that dumper payload in addition to this decryption payload, which could also be used to, you know, dump the game files. And then you could just overwrite the encrypted game files with your decrypted ones that you got from the decryption payload. So just to show that, we're going to go ahead and inject our FTP payload. So we'll throw the FTP payload in here. We'll head back. Hopefully, we'll be able to run another payload. So let's see. Oh, wait. Okay, I thought I crashed there for a second. It was stuck for a little bit. But I think we're good. If we head back here and we go to our URL redirector, we'll head back to our exploit page from Slayer's Gorvi. And we'll try this again, jailbreak plus netcat. Oh, unfortunately, I guess you can't run one payload after the other. So we'll, yep, that properly crashed that time. So we're going to have to reboot our PS5 once again. Okay, so I've rebooted it. I've relaunched the exploit again. You can see we're now waiting for payload. 
So once again, if we switch back over to our computer real quick, we've got our FTP payload loaded. So we're going to inject the payload on 9019. We get our notification that pops up, connect on 1337, and we should be good. So now if we open up a FTP client like FileZilla, copy the IP into the host box, port number 1337, we'll quick connect, and here we go. So if we head into MNT, our mount folder, our sandbox folder, our PFS mount folder, and then we have our then we have our PPSA 01325. So this is where the game files are. I guess the patch union would be the best one to go with because that's the one that includes whatever updates already pre-installed for the game as well. Oh, apparently not. That's empty. Well, never mind. I guess we're going to have to... I guess there's no updates installed. So we're going to go into app zero and we have our eboot.bin. So if we take this eboot.bin and extract it the same way that the normal dumper payload for the PS5 works when it dumps it to the USB or the... Um, or of course, normal FTP payloads like this where you copy the eboot out to your um, desktop here. If we do this, we have our eboot.bin, but that's just copied the encrypted version. If we open HXD and we throw the eboot.bin into the hex editor, you can see that it is encrypted. You can see the elf file, the .elf is down here. Uh, and then if we scroll further, further down, we have this, the actual ID of the game. This is typically what you see with an encrypted uh, eboot.bin. So if we then compare that to the one that we dumped over SOCAT with our decryption payload, we'll see that it should hopefully have decrypted it. So in the same location here, we've got our eboot.bin, significantly smaller. We throw this in. You can see this one starts on .elf. And then if we jump to 4000, we can see the start of the actual file here. And it is all decrypted which is what we like to see so if we have successful decryption now of ps5 executables i don't know if it fully dumped the eboot correctly because it did seem to go very quickly but then the eboot's not that big for this particular game so perhaps it did dump it just fine but as you can see compared to the encrypted version we've got decrypted encrypted decrypted encrypted so we do in fact have a decrypted eboot.bin we'll see if the the write.sprx if we throw that file in you can see this one has also been decrypted so in order to basically create a fully decrypted version of the game that you would want to say turn into a fake package file in future then all we would really need here is to extract the entire contents of the app zero directory with ftp so if i extract this entire folder out here to my desktop Okay, well, that took a lot longer than I initially thought. It took about five minutes because it's over like 20,000 files that it had to dump there. But there we go. We've copied the entire game out here to our computer over FTP. We could have used the dumper payload to dump it to a USB drive as well. That's another viable option. So you can see here we've got the eBoot, but that's the encrypted version. We also have the write.sprx, also the encrypted version. And uh, interestingly, there's also SCE modules. Uh, the libc.prx and this other prx file these were not decrypted by the decryption payload so maybe it did fail when i initially did it i did think it kind of exited kind of fast like it did the decryption pretty quickly so perhaps it did fail at some point and it wasn't able to do these files or perhaps it's just not designed to do the files in sce modules yet i'm not entirely sure but generally, once you extract the entire game, you would take your decrypted files right here. If we go into Sandbox, BFS, MNT. You would take the eBoot. You would overwrite the encrypted one with the decrypted one in your dump right there. And then if we go into our write.sprx, we'll also grab the write.sprx, the decrypted version, and overwrite the encrypted version with the decrypted version. And of course, if you were also able to successfully decrypt the files in SCE modules, then you would also copy those files over the decrypted versions and overwrite the encrypted versions with the decrypted versions. And once you've done that, you would have a successfully decrypted dump of the entire game. And that's essentially how you would do it. Although I suspect that in future, we'll probably get a payload similar to the PS4's dumper payload, which will not only dump all the game files, but also decrypt all of the executables for you automatically. I expect to see that will come out at some point as well which would make this a lot easier. But uh, in terms of what you can actually do with this, nothing right now that is particularly viable because now we can get decrypted dumps of our games. That's great. 
However, there's no way to run them currently on a jailbroken PS5. We don't have access to homebrew. We don't have access to run fake package files. Now, back in the PS4 with the early jailbreaks for the PS4, there was a another method of running games despite not having access to uh, being able to do package files at the time. There were no fake package files at the time. And there was something called a donor disk payload where you could take a decrypted dump of a game, a PS4 game, you could copy it to say the data folder on your PS4's hard drive, and then you could use a donor payload that would essentially, you know, take a game that you have on disk, a retail copy, and you would run that donor payload. And then when you ran the game, the disk game, the payload would actually swap out the files for the ones in the data folder. So you would actually be loading your game dump from the data folder when you launch the game disk instead of whatever game the game disk is meant to launch. That was one way of being able to load game dumps before we were able to create fake package files on the PS4. Again, I still think that requires some kind of like homebrew enabler functionality to get that working. So I don't know if we'll see something like that for the PS5 or not. But anyway, pretty exciting stuff all the same. It's been a long time since we've seen any kind of significant updates for the current exploits that we have on the PS5 up to firmware 4.51. Obviously, this exploit's only for 4.03 right now, but I suspect it will probably get ported to the other firmwares at some point as well. So um, yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. So hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.